Hello everyone and welcome to episode 28 of the P-Geek podcast and as always thanks for taking the time out of your day to tune in from wherever you are and I certainly hope that you're able to get something from this episode. In fact, um, I hope you do out of every episode but this one is is certainly going to be interesting because it's wrapped around a topic that you know I don't consider myself to be an expert in. Um, you know, I certainly consider myself knowledgeable in the use of technology and resources associated with that. Um, but this particular topic I have experience in, um, but not necessarily an expert in it. I mean, so I'm going to be giving you my perspective on using technology with it, with this particular um, area in mind. And um, it's more based around my own experiences of, of having my students use it and also doing it myself. Now, over the last month, we've had an enormous increase in the amount of people who are actually downloading and listening to the podcast, and that is really amazing. I mean, there's so many um, people that are starting to appear to actually be listening to the episodes, and and that goes a long way to ensuring that we um, get as many people on board as possible, because as our downloads increase, our rankings increase in iTunes and other podcast um, networks, and it just means more people get a chance to see it, uh, which is awesome because the more people that are seeing it, the more conversations it starts and the more resources um, people get exposed to. And I think over and above everything else, um, it just means that there's more people that are potentially learning from the things that are being shared. So we're really excited to, to dive into the next few episodes. Um, episode 30 is something very unique in that we're actually having a couple of guests coming on uh, sharing their successes related to technology and PE and I look forward to sharing those people with you Um, but yeah I mean let's dive into today's content. Now as I briefly alluded to in the introduction today's topic is going to be all about mindfulness and physical education and I mean mindfulness in itself is is becoming more and more popular and basically it has a real strong connection with meditation and those styles of um, activities such as you know maybe yoga and, and, and etc so I don't particularly assume or think of myself as an expert in mindfulness um, but I do know of a number of resources that are tech based that I've used to help explore and showcase this to my students Now, if you're really unfamiliar with that word, um, basically mindfulness is all about training yourself to pay attention in a specific way. And when a person is mindful, they're able to sort of focus in that present moment, um, you know, not thinking about things that are happening in the future or in the past and become more intentionally able to concentrate on what's happening around them. And I mean, to be honest, this is really that sort of characteristic and stereotypical view of of what meditation is in itself. And it's actually a really, really, really um, powerful tool to be able to do effectively. Um, And for many reasons, I mean, science backs this up, but it helps you to sort of clear your mind. It helps you to focus on your surroundings and your body and your environment, slow down your thoughts and help you concentrate and relax and deal with stresses and so on. So, I mean, it isn't something that people can just do instantly. It is a skill like anything else, and we do need to sort of practice it and do it over time to get the benefit of it. But through, through things such as meditation and yoga, I mean, these are actually able to become skills that we can see improving. And um, the reason that we're going to be talking about it today is that I have actually tried to implement some of these various tools into my senior classes and so forth. And the reason behind that is we actually look at it in the senior classes, for example, as a way to um, you know, improve a person's performance from a psychological perspective. But I also see value in actually using it to teach students about mindfulness and how to actually cope with you know, living in the 21st century world. Uh, you know, very different to, you know, years gone by and, and a lot of focus should be wrapped around trying to teach these skills to students as well. Now, I was really heartened last year to see Joey Fife at the physicaleducator.com who blogged about his elementary wellness month that he was implementing at his school. And this whole month was dedicated to actually focusing on various wellness processes and, and strategies and so forth that his elementary age kids um, were going to be focusing on and and I thought that was amazing and if you are interested in actually um, seeing 
more about that, then head over to his website at thephysicaleducator.com and you'll find the blog post in there that's related to um, Wellness Month and it has the entire process of, of basically outlining how he was running this with his students. And, and the basic part is he had hydration week, um, you know, exercise, sleep, and one of the other things that was part of it was was wellness. Uh, I mean, sorry, um, mindfulness. And he was using a couple of different tools to make this and integrate this into his into his school. And I thought it was absolutely incredible. And um, from that point in time, um, it's made me more conscious about trying to expose students to this. Prior to that activity, um, I had familiarized myself with a couple of the tools that we're going to be talking about and use them personally. Um, but yeah, definitely making them aware to my students and um, making that something that we explored. So I'm going to dive into the couple of tools that I've been using to try and increase my mindfulness and increase my skills in the area of meditation. Now, one of the first tools I want to share with people is something that I personally have been using and having lots of success with. And it is called Muse, which is a brain sensing headband. And it's an amazing example of biofeedback being used to actually improve your own brain and cognitive function. Now, if you're interested in in checking out where and how to purchase one of these, you can go to the peergeek.com forward slash muse, which is M-U-S-E. And basically what it is, it's a headband that you wear, obviously, and it takes you through with the connected app, a series of exercises that are designed to actually improve your mental fitness. And the basic premise is that, you know, we, ch- we train our bodies to improve our physical fitness. Um, this is all about ch- training our minds um, and getting some biofeedback around the things that we're doing and thinking. So it actually motivates you to work towards improving your brain functioning, improving how you respond to stress, um, improving emotional states, and so on. And basically, all you need to do is connect it to your mobile device, open it up, and you can experience a series of um, three, five, seven-minute workouts that are all about trying to improve your um, focus and mindfulness and so on. And Basically, the bottom line is that it actually senses whether your mind is actually becoming distracted. So, you know, if you're working or reading a book or example, um, you know, doing anything like that, distractions get in the way and your mind starts to stray away from those things. And, um, you know, sort of scientists have found that these indicators are what leads or can lead to unhappiness. So what Muse does is it actually guides you through those particular moments by giving you audio cues through the headband that basically help you become more attentive and focused. And the bottom line is that, you know, over a period of time, you can actually build these skills up so that you can catch yourself before these fo- um, before you become out of focus, which is really amazing. So um, pretty game-changing sort of technology, you know, put a headband on, go through like a meditation type routine that the app takes you through and basically, you know, you are able to get these biofeedback results that are all about trying to make you um, smart, not smarter, but your brain function smarter. Um, Pretty amazing stuff to be honest and, you know, what it actually measures is the electrical energy in your brain and it can use that to determine whether you are focused or out of focus and so on so go and check it out if you're um, interested you can go to the peergeek.com forward slash muse now i can imagine situations if you're teaching sports psychology or anything along those lines um, you could be using this with students i mean you could have one device and you could have kids basically move around and um, you know share it do a five minute session and explore how that actually works to fulfill a lot of the other goals uh, in your program so amazing stuff Um, particularly like the fact that it's gamified. So, you know, as you work towards your goal, you actually get to see the improvements that you're making and and all of those sorts of things. So highly recommended. Um, And it's probably a reason why I'm actually starting to feel a whole new level of focus and concentration related to everything that I'm doing uh, in my teaching. 
Now, the first experience I ever had with meditation was wrapped around the application Get Some Headspace. And I actually found and discovered this when I was doing some research for my senior peer class that were looking at meditation and its impact on um, sports performance. And as a result of it, I found and had heard other people talk about Headspace um, as a really powerful app to actually in teach people about meditation and mindfulness. And it got me sort of um, thinking that, you know, I could try this out first and, and, and I did and that was the first experience I had participating in the Take 10 program. And the basic idea is that you use the app, connect, you know, yourself to the application via a set of headphones or just put your phone aside and lie there or sit comfortably in a chair and it takes you through these 10-minute meditation or introduction to meditation workouts and the basic premise is that it actually teaches you what you need to know to actually make this a skill that you can actually see some real benefits from so um, lots of science behind it you know the guy that's actually um, created headspace not only does he have an amazing voice um, that's perfect for meditation but yeah he's in, you know really knowledgeable in the space you know i could pretend to sit there and take my students through something like this or i could expose them to the people who are the best in the world at this and have them basically go through and, and teach me and um, the first time i ever used this with my students it was you know a matter of me connecting it to a set of speakers we all um, we all you know closed the, the blinds in the classroom and and sort of used that as an opportunity to, to explore what it was that we were doing and talking about and we made it a regular activity for the period of time that we were focusing on sports psychology. So highly recommended. You can head to thepeergeek.com forward slash headspace to actually download the app and start to make your way through the Take 10 program. And if you complete the Take 10 program, it actually um, gives you the ability to open up to you know hundreds of hours worth of uh, meditations ranging from 60 minutes right through to, you know, two minute work, you know, quick meditation activities. So highly recommend that. Now, if, if you're looking for another resource in the same sort of space, then, you know, I can't, I can't go past recommending Smiling Mind, which is along the same vein. It's a sort of gamified version um, of meditation, whereby as you meditate, you actually award badges and and so on, and you can, you know, track how many um, sessions you've done and minutes and so forth. And the thing that I really like about it is it actually breaks up the meditation into age ranges as well. So you've got the 7 to 11 years old um, program, the 12 to 15 years program, the 16 to 22 years, the adults, and then you've got some sort of smaller bite-sized programs, and you basically pick them, and then you work through the various activities that are inside each of those um, that are all about trying to um, be, you know, teach you about your brain and its ability to meditate and become mindful and focus on the various things that you're doing. So I've had some success with that with myself, looking to actually introduce that into a junior curriculum earlier, I mean, at some stage during this year. And the basic premise is that it could be used um, at the end of physical education practical sessions so that students have the ability to sort of refocus and, and rejuvenate their minds after they've been highly sort of wound up and energized um, in a practical physical activity setting. So looking forward to seeing how that would work out and then um, sort of blogging about that. Now another app that I'm really fond of and have mentioned a number, a number of times is Yoga Studio. Now Yoga Studio is you know not necessarily directly tied to mindfulness, but it is along the same vein as um, you know relaxation and sort of goes hand in hand with meditation. And um, the Yoga Studio app is by far the best yoga app that I've come across. The movements are really flowing and you know high quality production of the actual actions from the instructor inside the app. Um, basically, this is the way in which I teach yoga and have taught yoga in a number of um, classes, and it means that I don't have to know anything about it. In fact, I don't know anything about yoga, but I get to teach it because I use Yoga Studio. And the best part of it is that I actually get to join in with the students. So if you're interested in checking out Yoga Studio and then you know maybe projecting it to a large screen, 
and having that teach your students, then head along to the pgeek.com forward slash yoga studio and it'll redirect you to the app store where you can download the app. Um, highly recommend it. I mean, definitely go and check it out. If you haven't yet, whether you use it in your class or not, there's still potential for you to use it um, in your personal life and those sort of gains can you know, eventually find their way into the classroom as well. Now, while we're on applications that I'm fond of, um, there is an app that is great just for a quick relaxation and it's actually called Breathing Zone. And Breathing Zone is, I mean, it's quite simple. All it does is it actually forces you through a slow control breathing regime. So you start the app and then you basically have to focus on what's happening, listen to it and actually respond. I'll give you a quick demonstration of it so that you can hear exactly what you need to be doing. There you go. So that's just an example of it. Um, I had classic strings turned on, but you don't need to have that. You can turn off the background so it's just like so. Breathe out. And you can actually Breathe customize the speed at which um, the breaths are occurring. So you can Breathe do it much in. slower, like so. Breathe out. And eventually the voice disappears and you actually end up in this really controlled um, breathing that is definitely shown and proven to actually um, be really effective in returning people's concentration and focus and reducing stress levels and so on. So I've used breathing zone at the end of sessions before, you know, in highly sort of energized sessions where I know the very next session, if they're in, an, in a traditional classroom. Um, and we had a couple of students that were just completely off the rails after PE classes. And we actually use breathing zone with the whole group to return them back to that sort of normal level of um, excitement and enthusiasm. I mean, it's, that's not always the way in which we dealt with it, but it was definitely one of the ways that um, we, we showcased it. Now, I've used breathing zone myself for that exact same reason. You know, after working late and long hours and, you know, you're stuck on a computer screen, um, using breathing zone sort of helps me focus and, and sort of switches me off before, um, you know, you might go to bed. And the final app I want to share with you is one that is also very similar to sort of um, Choose Muse in a way. Obviously, it does it all without um, headbands and so on, but it is actually a biofeedback tool. And it's one of the very first biofeedback apps that I've ever seen. And it is called Stress Doctor. And it's by the same people that have released a number of apps like heart rate apps and so forth and an app called Stress Check, which is really impressive. Um, app on its own um, and I definitely recommend going checking out Stress Check 2 um, which is an amazing app by Azumio um, but Stress Doctor is by them as well and what it does is it actually um, allows you to put your finger over the camera lens and it tracks your heart's variance in terms of um, the beats and the distance between beats and so on and it actually correlates that to a sort of stress level and the whole premise is that you are taken through a breathing cycle which is all about reducing your overall stress. And yeah, it's actually quite cool. So it's an example of biofeedback being used to help shape um, our mindset and mindfulness. So highly recommend it. And if you're interested in checking it out, go to thepeageek.com forward slash, forward slash stress doctor. And that brings us to the end of episode 28, which has been focusing on mindfulness and its role in PE, but I guess more more precisely as just in uh, education and in your um, personal life as well. Now, as I mentioned from the start, you know, I'm certainly not an expert when it comes to mindfulness, but I do know of a number of these resources which I've used and have been able to showcase these to my students. Um, some of them I use personally, others I have used with students and uh, like anything, I mean, it's a skill. If you practice it over and over, then you can get better at it. And as the research would suggest, it is certainly something that we should look forward to and try and actually include into our um, daily lives and the lives of our students. Okay, that brings us to the end of episode 28. So I'll see you next time in episode 29. See you later.